HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have a preview of this year's Hiller football team. Hopkinton Health Director Sean McAuliffe joins us to talk about the ongoing Triple E threat. We have highlights from the first girls volleyball game of the season. And Matt Clark has our HCAM insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. The Friends of Hopkinton voted at their meeting to change the time of the Saturday, September 14th, 2019 Hopkinton Family Day event to 2 p.m. until 6 p.m. The fireworks show has been canceled. President Ann Click stated, quote, this is in response to the Triple E outbreak. However, in the Hopkinton tradition, Hopkinton Family Day on September 14th is still going to be a wonderful family event." Unquote. The Hopkinton Senior Center is hosting an open house on Wednesday, September 18th. The open house includes free fitness programs and the annual bocce challenge between the Hopkinton Police and Fire Departments and the Senior Center's best bocce players. The bocce challenge will take place at 3 p.m. and air live on HCAM's YouTube page. For more details, head over to our website. Hopkinton Health Director Sean McAuliffe recently joined us in studio to update us on the ongoing Triple E threat. Here's a look. Tom Nappy here. We're here with Hopkinton Public Health Director Sean McAuliffe. Sean, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. And I understand you've been a busy man lately, uh, especially with this Triple E threat. Uh, can you talk about the status of the Triple E threat here in Hopkinton? Certainly. So. In the town of Hopkinton, we're still at um, a critical risk designation. Um, a, because we have one positive mosquito pool that's um, known to have Triple E in it. Um, that pool is up on, in the Saddle Hill area. And the other reason we're in that critical designation is because we've had animal cases and um, one human case um, in our region. Um, and for those reasons, bet between the human case, the positive pool, and then the, um, the weather conditions, the frequent heavy rains, um, that's all contributed to make um, the potential for mosquito exposure um, a, a critical risk. And, and I understand you collected a lot of data. Can you tell us about some of that data that you've collected? So we were part of the Central Mass Mosquito Control Project. Um, so there, they collect weekly samples and the state health department now that we're in a critical risk situation. They also collect um, mosquito samples. We have 12 sampling locations throughout the town. Um, and I'm able to go in and look at the central masses data on a weekly basis in the states about every two weeks. And what we're seeing is that the mosquito that um, the mosquito population in town that's positive for Triple E um, is at it's about 290 percent more of those mosquitoes than were present um, in 2018 and 2017. So we know that we have a high mosquito population with Triple E. And when we um, when I was looking at the data the week prior to the aerial spraying. Um, out of the 192,000 mosquitoes that were trapped and um, submitted for um, to the state lab, 162,000 of those were this cattail mosquito, and that's the mosquito that's been identified with Triple E in um, in Hopkinton. And our concern is that we needed to 
or the state felt that they needed to reduce that population, and that is really what triggered the state to uh, perform the aerial spraying. So I understand this is something that people should take very seriously. Uh, what are some of the precautions people can take to avoid uh, any case uh, with mosquitoes? And this, this is one of the things that we really wanted to impress upon the population or just the residents in Hopkinton is that this is manageable. It's, you know, we know that the mosquitoes are, um, they feed primarily from dusk to dawn. So you want to avoid being outdoors during that prime feeding period. So you, you, if you reduce your exposure, you're less likely to be bitten. Um, if you use uh, mosquito repellent, um, you're less likely to be um, bitten. If you're wearing long sleeves, long pants, when you're outdoors, if you're in that, that dusk time, um, wear you know, protective clothing like long pants, long shirts. And if we're doing all of these things, we're reducing the risk of getting bitten and um, we're reducing the risk of getting infected. And it's all something that we have control over. Um, and then if you're, you know, if you have other concerns or additional concerns, you, know, you can contact the Central Mass Mosquito Control Project and they can come out and they can spray your yard. Um, I know there have been some questions about whether or not there'd be an, another aerial spray. Um, that's highly doubtful because um, I know going into next week, the evening temperatures are likely to be below 60 degrees, and that's not an optimal temperature for uh, the mosquitoes to be out at. Um, but you know, we have published on our um, town website, and if you follow our tweets, um, we're constantly providing and pushing documentation out to the public. Um, we just put out a notice last night about the fifth human case that was identified locally. And um, I suspect there'll be one more um, uh, release in the next, if not tonight, if tomorrow. Um, th th the word is that there's one more case, a uh, human case that's to be reported um, in the region. And unfortunately, from what I understand, this is a threat that could be around perhaps a couple of summers? Yes, I mean, for this, this year, um, the, the risk will be present until we have a, uh, a killing frost. Um, last year that didn't occur, I don't believe, until after Halloween. So we need to take you know, some personal responsibility and precautions to protect ourselves, again, from dusk to dawn. Um, and we'll be meeting with the state to review you know, whether or not last year counted as a, uh, a bad year. Um, right now, based on the data I've reviewed, um, it's not. Typically, these events occur in two-year cycles, um, so uh, we could have a problem next year. Um, but um, again, we'll be applying the same, um, the knowledge we learned from this year, um, and improving communication, et cetera, to address the problem if it does occur next year. Well, certainly a lot of local events were uh, moved from the evening hours because of this threat, such as the Hopkinton Day and many of the uh, sporting events uh, in town. Uh, could you talk about uh, what some of the next steps uh, are going to be to try to fight this Triple E problem? Well, I mean, the, the rescheduling, it, it's just, again, part of those per, uh, personal protective uh, measures that we can take. We, we didn't feel that it was prudent to have um, you know, these events go into and beyond the dusk hours. It, it just wasn't worth the risk. It wasn't advised by the state. So, um, you know, in speaking with the school um, and then speaking with the schools in the region, we realized that we were all in the same boat and it made, you know, practical sense to eliminate or reduce the risk to the students um, by changing the event times. Um, and it's the same thing that occurred with, um, you know, when we sat down with uh, the representatives from the Friends of Hopkinton that run Family Day, um, they took the step and realized that it wasn't worth the risk to uh, the residents who would be attending Family Day to be exposed to mosquitoes, um, you know, after dawn, you know, and, and, and then the volunteers would be working, setting up the fireworks and the lighting. So, um, again, we're, we're stressing the need to take those 
personal precautions and pers you know, those preventative measures um, to avoid mosquito contact. And is there going to be any more spraying going on in the area that you know of? Like I said, we, we don't believe there'll be aerial spraying um, because the mosquitoes are, shouldn't be active um, it, it, during the overnight hours. So right. that doesn't make a lot of sense. But we still have the Central Mass Mosquito Control uh, Project um, that'll be working in the area. And people can contact um, the project and schedule um, home spraying, or they can do it by neighborhood. Um, and then if, if there are other threats that we see in town, um, we have the ability, working with the state, the project, and the health department, to mobilize them to treat high-risk areas. And, um, and that's something that we'll be looking at through the weekend and into next week. See the entirety of this important interview with Health Director Sean McAuliffe at our website, hcam.tv. Coming up next, we preview this year's Hiller football team. We have highlights from the first girls volleyball game of the season, and Matt Clark has our HCAM insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Come to Western Nurseries on Saturday, September 7th for our third annual Blooms, Brews, and Barbecue event. Enjoy barbecue from PJ's and Gotta Q. Hot dogs from Snappy Dogs, fresh homemade ice cream from Yulman's, and beer and wine from Marty's Liquors. The F-Tones, Hot Acoustics, The Rationales, and South Street Band will be providing the beats. Join us for a day filled with food, fun, and friends. All proceeds benefit the Jimmy Fund, brought to you by Marty's Liquors and Weston Nurseries. For more details, go to westernnurseries.com. The Hiller football team is set to get their season underway. Here's a look at this year's squad. Last season, the Hopkinton Hillers football team finished the regular season with four wins and three losses. They took down Nosset in the quarterfinals of the South Division Four sectionals before falling to Milton in the semifinals. This year, with first-year head coach, longtime assistant Dan McLean at the helm, the Hillers look to get back to the playoffs and make some noise this season. Coach, it's your uh, first season at the helm for the Hillers. Uh, congratulations on taking over the head coaching role. Uh, how are things going in practice so far? Really good. I think the kids are excited. It's a new season, uh, a lot of expectations, um, a lot of inexperience. So we have a lot of younger kids coming through now. And I think it's, you know, being here for the last four years really has helped because I know the kids and I know the system. So we're, we're in pretty good shape. we got some new coaches, but uh, so far so good. It's early in the season. It's early in the, in the camp. You know, we still got two more scrimmages before the season starts, but so far so good. Terrific. And um, obviously lost a couple of good players uh, last season. Uh, how is it looking to uh, replace some of the top players that you lost last year? You know, to replace a DeLoyer or a Kelleher is almost impossible, but we're – we get some good young specialty kids, especially the junior class. Uh, Robbie Bernardin is going to be our quarterback this year. He's a senior. He's been waiting for this opportunity for, for three years now. So he's getting the opportunity this year. He's playing really well right now. He's listening. He's learning. The kids are excited, you know, I, especially the senior class. I think they're hungry, and we have a very good junior class as well. So I think if we put those pieces together, it's, it's coming together pretty good so far. And for those that don't know, can you just talk about some of your background in coaching? I've been, uh, this is my 16th or 17th season in a row coaching. Um, I started at Franklin as an assistant coach, and then I went to Tri-County for four years. I was the head coach at Tri-County. Um, and then I went to Bellingham for five years. And then I was pretty much going to take a little leave, take a little break, and then Coach Gerard called me and offered me the defensive coordinator uh, position here. So I was here for four years defensive coordinator, and now this is my first year at the helm. All right, Coach. Well, we're looking forward uh, to a terrific season. Congratulations again, and best of luck this year. I appreciate it. Thanks for everything you do for the, for the program. We really appreciate it. We'll see you out there. The Hillers lost a number of players from last year, but have some good experienced captains at the helm. I'm Luke McDonald. I play offensive line and linebacker. I'm Zach Levy, running back, linebacker. Uh, Max Lakasha, receiver and cornerback. Robbie Bernardin, quarterback. All right. Um, could you talk about how the practices uh, have gone so far? 
Sure, yeah. Um, they've been great, honestly, from what I've been seeing this year. It's just a different kind of practice. It's a lot more involved. It's more intense. And our guys really have been handling it well, from what I've been seeing. And I'm, just, I'm excited for it. I'm really glad what I'm seeing. The practices have been great so far this year. Everyone's working together as a team. We're just excited for our scrimmages and um, upcoming season. Um, we really had some fast-paced practices. Um, we don't really get a lot of breaks. We just keep it moving. Um, we're conditioning a lot, just getting ready to run during the season. Yeah, um, lots of moving, high tempo. we got to put a lot of stuff in, but um, I like how the team looks, and um, we're getting things done. Everyone's looking great. The team's looking awesome. Everyone's working really hard. Um, we're doing all the right things in practice and um, just having a lot of fun. Oh, we're going to be nice. I believe it. Our guys, we got a lot of young guys, guys who haven't played too much varsity time, but I believe that we can come together as a team soon in time for our first game against Wayland and be successful as a unit. All right, are you going to are you going to be good to go? Yes, sir. All right. I'm just healing up now so I'm not at any risk later in the season. And uh, what's it been like to work with coach McLean? Oh, it's awesome. I love that guy. He's such a good man and a good coach and he has so much knowledge about the game. I'm just ecstatic to be having him as a head coach this season. Coach McLean has been awesome. Um, he's a great guy and everyone uh, really enjoys him. Well, Coach McLean definitely has a lot of energy, um, makes practice fun, makes you want to work. Um, the rest of the coaches really have the same energy, and they really just make me excited to practice every day. Yeah, Coach Mack gets everyone fired up. Um, there's a lot of energy at practice. Um, I like our coaching staff a lot this year. I think uh, we have a good team. All right, and do you guys have any personal goals this year? Um, I'm just trying to win as many games as we can. I care about the team. Absolutely. Yep. And win as many games as possible. We'll see where that gets us this year. Hiller girls volleyball kicked off their season against Medfield. Here's a look at what happened. Is welcoming the Medfield Warriors into the field house for the opening night of uh, league play. And what a great night it is to open up this season. The Hillers, a young, hungry, talented team. Looking forward to rack up some wins this year after going 19 and two overall last year before falling to a very good Franklin team in the playoffs. But this team certainly has a lot of athletic ability and I think they could do some great things this season. Yeah, they are um, lost uh, five seniors, including a state player, uh, it's going to be tough to replace that, especially on the outside hitters, losing Jenna Wilworth and Bella Ansi. Right outside, voice again. Voice taking control. Hiller's opening up the largest lead of the young season. Morgan serving. Hiller's up by six. Great block from Kate. Free ball. Sistari. Grabmeyer. The dump over. Nice. That was impressive. She used the peripherals there to see that open slot. Nice knuckleball deep. Outside. Angie gets to that. Kate just pumps it to the back row. Oh, that's it. First set. Hopkinton takes the first set 25 to 13. Nice dig, nice get. Well done, Bob. Great play from Boyce. That was a great point by the Hillers. Side out, Hopkinton. Great block. Nice block, well done. Four hits. Another rocket from Lorette.
Right outside. Nice put away. Well done, Gildak. There it is. Melanie Gilday, look out. And there we go. All right. Hopkinson takes the second set, 25 to 18. There it is. Oh, unforced error. Nice serve. <laughs> Grabmeyer outside. Nice. Good swing from Boyce. Kate with a little bump over. Angie gets to that. Outside, Ashley just pushes it back in play. And that's out. Caden, outside, Grabmeyer, put away. There it that's is. It. 25 to 10. Girls win the third set. They win the match. 3-0. The Hopkinton Hillers sweep the Medfield Warriors in game one of the season. Junior Caden Boyce, aka Bub, racks up a team leading nine kills in the win. Senior Angie Grabmeyer contributed five kills of her own. Sophomore Kate Powers led the Hillers on a 10-0 service run and racked up five aces. And senior Morgan Allen contributed a team leading 18 digs. The Hillers start off their regular season with a W. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channel. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Monday, September 9th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, September 10th at 6 p.m., the Hopkinton Select Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 7.30 p.m., the Conservation Commission meeting will air live on YouTube. On Wednesday, September 11th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers Girls Volleyball Team takes on the Westwood Wolverines, live on HCAM Ed. And on Friday, September 13th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers Girls Volleyball Team takes on the Barnstable Red Raiders, live in HCAM Ed. And also in HCAM Ed, the Ashland Legion Baseball vs. Somerset game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you could stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Happy school year, everyone. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. <laughs>
been a very busy man lately. Uh, there was a blue-green algae uh, found in some of the local lakes. Uh, you, uh, you may have seen it on the news. Uh, can you tell us about that uh, blue-green algae that was found in the lakes, and uh, is it dangerous? Yes, so we have, um, so cyanobacteria, which is a blue-green algae, um, was identified in the, the bathing beach area at Hopkinton State Park. Um, they, so the DCR notified the state health department. They came out, sampled it, confirmed that the toxin levels were high enough to warrant um, closing, the, closing that area. And when, they, when the state closes, like the bathing beach, it includes the entire um, lake body. So they're coming out on a weekly basis, sampling that beach area to see if the toxin levels have been reduced to a, um, a reasonable and safe um, concentration. Um, so until we receive word from the state, um, you know, I wouldn't advise anybody to bring you know, their pets um, in the area and the area is already uh, cordoned off to prevent uh, swimming. And this week there was supposed to be a triathlon there and they've uh, canceled the swimming event or the swimming component to that event. Um, and if, you know, if residents see any suspect or odd green or blue bacteria or uh, discoloration in Whitehall and Maspinock, we encourage them to contact the health department because we can go out, um, take a look, obtain photos. We can contact uh, limnologists in the area who can make those determinations that it is or is not um, a blue, uh, toxic blue-green algae that then would get forwarded to the state and then the state would send someone out to test it to confirm it. But right now um, we're going out on a weekly basis to look at the lakes. I'm actually leaving here to go look at a, uh, an area um, that I'm fairly certain isn't a blue-green algae that we need to be concerned with. But nonetheless, I want to go out and get those, uh, the, the, the field sampling and the photographs so I can provide that to the state for uh, a determination. So as of right now, you, you wouldn't recommend swimming in the lakes at this current moment? Um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything at Hopkinton State Park until we know for sure. Um, I don't have any data at this moment that would suggest that uh, there's a problem um, at Maspinock or at uh, Whitehall. And again, um, if anybody sees anything that they're concerned with, um, we encourage people to contact us. So those bodies. Um... See the entirety of this important interview with Health Director Sean McAuliffe at our website, hcam.tv.